Oh, you stuck over here? Yeah, you stuck. <laughs> you silly zombies. Welcome, everybody, to the Falcon One Shot. I am your host, Falcon. This right here is an early look at Monsters and Monocles, which should be hitting Steam on the 16th, so just a bit of a heads up for you. Uh, this is going to be a big treat to all of you Twin Stick Shooter fans out there. The game is very much along the vein of a nuclear throw and maybe Binding of Isaac as well. The caveat here, however, is that there is more of a focus on multiplayer. Now, mind you, it's not a game that you need multiplayer to actually win, beat, play, etc., but it definitely has its um, benefits for doing so. But, all that said, done let's get into the game over here and show you what this plays out as so we'll go into press continue um, over here you get to choose um, the multiplayer function that I mentioned you could actually play up to four people at once um, I'm gonna be playing only by myself though because I have no friends apparently um, here are a couple of um, characters you could choose from this will be the squad of your steampunk Victorian um, I guess investigators of the paranormal I'm gonna be going with monobond just because I like this little fellow over here and let's actually go into a little bit of a small cutscene Alrighty, we're good to go over here, so I'm not sure if it's just me, but I get like a really big TMNT vibe from that draw from the sky right there, but maybe it's just me, I don't know. Either way, over here is going to be like your hub in a sense, we walk over here to the left hand side, by the way, you can read all these signs here for some tips on the gameplay and stuff like that, but I already know what I'm doing, so I'll discuss it as we go along over here. Um, while you're inside over here, you can break down some of these crates for maybe a little bit of gold, stuff like that, maybe if you're lucky you'll find a weapon, but really not too possible early on. Now here is going to be your trinket area. Essentially, whenever you make some progress in the levels, if you beat them or you die, you'll find some trinkets, very much like Nuclear Throne and Binding of Isaac. Uh, what's really cool is when you collect these trinkets, you can come back home or to your main hub and use any sort of coinage you've actually acquired to level it up to level 2, 3, 4, etc, etc. So I'm going to start off over here because I've been playing this off camera beforehand with a few buffs here for our first level. So I'm going to go with Health Item Plus, Increase Health from Items, which is good. We'll also pick up the flamethrower is a really good weapon. Rating launch is also pretty decent. Let me go with knockback reduction and radius for grenade. Fire it for revolver. I don't really use the revolver too often, so let me just go with the grenade launcher, which I actually do enjoy quite a bit. And that'll be it. So I'm coming into this um, run with three buffs here happening. And as I mentioned, the more coins you acquire, you can come back over here and level up uh, for future runs as well. And then that's about it for the main hub for now, I'm going to say. It's an early access title, mind you, so there's still a lot to be worked on. But at the moment, you have three levels to kind of choose from. The city's kind of a bit more plain. I enjoy the tomb a lot more. I already beat the boss for the tomb level as well. I don't think we'll be actually seeing a boss with this video because of what, it's a Falcon one-shot, so I'm very limited to what I could show you guys. So, alrighty, so let's go ahead underway over here. Um, our objective is going to be to find the key gun and destroy the barrier door. Now, it should be noted, the levels will be procedurally generated, as you could probably imagine. Um, each level will definitely have a different type of objective involved with it. Sometimes it'll be like, kill a certain amount of enemies. Sometimes it'll be like, uh, find a key gun, for instance. Sometimes it'll be like, kill a certain amount of mini-bosses, stuff like that. So, here at the moment, we have to find a key gun, which is actually a really cool weapon. It actually does serve as a weapon for the level. Um, unfortunately, the moment you break the barrier door down with it, you lose the gun. And let me tell you, when I lost that gun, I was so disappointed, because you'll see it. It's going to be so goddamn amazing whenever you actually do get it over here. But let's talk a little bit about the enemies here. So we have these little ghost slimer dudes. Relatively easy to bring down. They have a little bit of a trick to them, however, in that they will actually eventually disappear like that and teleport somewhere around you. So it's a definitely an easy way to lose track of them and take damage. Uh, inadvertently over here. Now over here we have these eyeball dudes. They essentially shoot the little sticky stuff on the floor. If you walk on it, you're fine. It'll slow you down a little bit, but it will not hurt you. Um, if it hits you on impact, that is when it will definitely hurt you. Now, if you pay attention to my... I picked up that health item. That was a bad idea. I should have probably saved that for later. Um, I'm trying to like, you know, talk and explain stuff here, so this will be a bit more difficult than I'm used to, but um, just bear with me here. Um, if you pay attention to my health bar, I can't do it here at the moment, but you'll probably see a number on it here at the moment. 
That is an indication of our multiplier for kills. Essentially, whenever you level up, or not level up, but whenever you kill a certain amount of enemies back to back, back to back, back to back, I guess continuously would be more ideal. Um, your strength of attack will definitely grow bigger. That's where these eyeballs come into play because, as you can see, not only do you kill them, but then they drop all these little small critters that die relatively easy. So we're up to a two already. And we're up to a three. If I could get this multiplier to max damage, which is now at two, I think it's going to be at three. Our shot will definitely get a lot stronger, and you'll visibly see it. As a matter of fact, you could you could probably even see the effect of it already. Like the shot does seem a bit more thicker. There you go. See, um, I think four is the max actually. Then Let's bring all you guys down here. I'm trying to make sure we get all these kills. I could show off this feature here. Oh, I wish I had more eyeballs to kill. There we go. We're at max, and you see how my shot now is a lot more bigger? Well, obviously, it's a lot stronger in the process. Oh, but we lost our multiplier because we didn't kill in time. That's unfortunate. But it's a really cool way to kind of build up the strength of your shot if you're obviously able to kill continuous enemies. That is where guns like the spread shot come into play because it actually has a big range of attacks, so you can definitely kill a lot of enemies at the same time. And whenever you have trinkets to actually power up your weapons, um, you'll do a lot better as well. Now, speaking of weapons, I'm not sure. I don't think we've actually acquired any single extra weapon thus far. And that's where the game really shines. There's a lot of different weapons to mess around with. But so far, we've been kind of really barren with that. Alright, this should give us a chance to multiply quite a bit. Little guy. Little guy, you need to stop, okay? There you go, we're up to level 2 now. They're all down. Really, no weapons thus far. That's really surprising. So, there's different ways to get weapons. You can get them from enemy drops, and you could also get them from chests scattered all over the level itself. I took some damage right there, wasn't really paying attention at that enemy nearby. Oh, there we go! We got one. It should be noted as well, that the enemies, whenever they spot you and you've aggroed them, they will follow you to the ends of the earth. Like, um, if you go into one room unexpectedly, and you haven't cleared another one, expect all these enemies to follow you until wherever you decide to go. So definitely clear out a room before you move onwards, because these guys are relentless, as you can probably see here. Now, I want to go back... Oh! Is that the stake launcher? Oh, good god almighty, that's... So far, my favorite weapon thus far. Yes, pick this up. Alrighty. Check this out. So obviously, the rate of fire for this is really terrible, however, it's got piercing potential. So, not only is it really strong, but it'll go through a lot of enemies as well. And what's cool about it is because it doesn't... Oh, we haven't talked about the um, overheat feature just yet, have we? Okay. Well, if you look at my UI up in the upper left corner, you should probably note the weapons that I have here equipped at the moment. And you'll see like a little bar just slowly building up underneath it. That is our barrier right here. We need to find the key still, however, or the gun. And we got a Mercury's Blessing, which is going to be speed up. Perfect. So, if you pay attention to that little um, bar underneath my weapon, you'll notice a little bit of a bar building up. Some guns have a higher risk of... Let me save that for later. Some guns have a higher risk... Amka bases. Resurrect on Dead consumes items on use. Oh, really cool! An extra chance item. I've never gotten that one before. Um, anyway, certain guns have a higher chance to overheat. So sometimes, like, the overpowered weapons will indeed overheat, especially based on the rate of fire. Um, when that happens, you cannot use that weapon until it, obviously, is no longer overheated. But that's where you can actually switch weapons from the fly and use the other one meanwhile. What's really cool, however, is you can use that to your advantage. Like, you could probably use a really OP gun over and over. Once it overheats, swap over to something a lot more easier to use, like, say, this handgun or the stake launcher, which never overheats on you because of its slower rate of fire. I use a dash attack there, or not a dash attack, but a dash to avoid damage. When you use that dash, you're completely immune to damage, so keep that in mind. I'm not really using it too often, but um, further levels down the line, you'll definitely be focusing on dashing to avoid damage here down the line. Okay. These little bomb fellas, if you blow them up, they obviously have a little bit of an impact or a little bit of a radius on their blow-ups, so you could use them as a bit of a weapon in your favor as well. We have more health items over here. Let me go back to my stake launcher, which was doing me wonders beforehand. I switched over to show you the effects of, you know, switching on the fly, but honestly, once I get the stake launcher, I hang out with this weapon for a very, very long time. Let me just max our health out here if we can. Okay, here we've already kind of been through. Ah, oddly enough, that bomb explosion was not enough to bring down the ghost. They have a bit more HP than I'm used to. Nope, another dude behind me right there. All right, we got him. Here we go, key gun. So... Check this out. This is going to be such a fun gun. So, I'm going to pick this up here. Look at how fast this shoots. Now, the damage on it is actually pretty low, but considering the rate of fire, and look at the, um... You see how it has no buildup for the overheat feature? Exactly. So, you can shoot this over and over and over and never overheat, even with this redonkulous 
um, rate of fire. So what you would want to do here, for instance, instead of coming over here, because the moment you shoot this door, you lose the gun. What you could do is essentially go around here and just clear out the room, get some more gold, and, um, you know, bada bing, bada boom, you've essentially taken advantage of this gun. Because it's goddamn amazing. Talk about the multiplier bonuses on this one too, right? Oh, baby. We got a giant slimer dude over here too, shooting as little as many slimers at me! So yeah, the, the damage on it is very low, but considering the rate of fire, I think it's definitely well worth it. So definitely use it whenever you pick it up, before you decide to open the barrier door with that. We have another stake launcher there. Now, once I use the gun, we are on the door, we will lose it, and we definitely want to have a backup. I think I saw a spread shot, and if, we, if I did see the spread shot gun, I will be picking that one up, because it's a really good weapon that complements the stake launcher quite well, because you have a... A really strong single-shot weapon, followed up by a range of attack and old soul. Spread shot, radius attack weapon as well to kind of complement it. Alright, you gotta go down, Slimer Man. He's down. A again, we already have our objective. I could just go to the exit now and go over to the next level. However, um, you definitely want to pick up some more coins to help you out in between, because you can use these coins between levels too actually buy items, whether it's health items or different weapons. Assuming you didn't really get a good, um, roll when it comes to weapons in a level, you could definitely buy some at the gun shop between levels if you want to. So there's a lot more enemies over here left over. I'm surprised, did we, did we run into, like, one single chest? I don't think we have, have we? Oh, here we go! <laughs> I just missed it completely. And you're gonna have a lot of coins for me? Oh! A steam-powered scope, what do you do? Range up, fire rate down. Oh! So, as you can see, now I'm shooting a lot slower, which is fine. This actually helps out weapons that overheat faster, but now the range is even longer. So, something like the Blunderbuss, which has a tendency to overheat really fast, now has a longer range and a big spread. So, this is a good weapon that complements the, the stake launcher, I'm going to say. So, you know what? If I don't see the spread shot, we might just go with the Blunder... Oh, we have the spread shot. Never mind. We'll go with the spread shot instead. Um, let's go ahead and open up the door here. And we've lost access to the gun. So, our exit is right there, available to us now. We have another spread shot right here. And I have some HP right there as well. Let me pick up the spread shot. Let me show this one off here if I can. So, I think the spread shot really is not... Oof! Okay. I don't think the spread shot is really, uh... Benefits from that power that we picked up. As you can see, the rate of fire is now very low. Um, the range is a lot longer, definitely. But I think this gun really benefits from a faster shot speed here. So, I don't think that complements it too well. So, we might just go with the Blunderbuss instead. Alright, you guys are down. Should just go into the exit, but I want to kill the rest of these guys. We do have some health items around me, so I'll be able to max ourselves out before we do get on to the next level here. Now, uh, unfortunately, because this is a Falcon one-shot, I don't believe we have enough time to get to the boss, unfortunately. Um, for the boss, you have to beat a second level, and then you fight the boss itself. Which I still haven't seen for this, um level just yet. Um, each level has a lot of different bosses, mind you, it's not only just one. But I haven't seen the first level boss for the mansion just yet. I've seen the tomb one, that one was a really fun fight. Uh, the city one was just completely difficult for me, just on my own. Um, and this one I haven't seen just yet, so we're done here. Let me go ahead and do this, and before we exit on out of here, let me get the blunderbuss here. Which is right here. We also have the grenade launcher, but I, I like the blunderbuss, especially with the range and fire speed downgrade we got here. So that's fine. We're maxed out. Let's go over here to the shop. And in between levels, you get to um, go ahead and just... Well, not really what I'm going to do. But that's a really good, interesting uh, mechanic to show off, too. In case you come over here, right, and you are missing a bit of coin to maybe buy a weapon or buy a not health item, you could always go back to the prior level in case you left some enemies and kill them for some extra coins in case you're a bit short, so just a bit of a heads up. Uh, let's see here, we have the auto stake launcher. This is basically the stake launcher just with a faster rate of fire. This one will overheat on you, so just keep that in mind. I enjoyed it a bit, but I prefer the slower one just because it never overheats on you. Uh, Vulcan's Boots gives you mobility, so you move faster, which is really, really good. Flamethrower, eh, you know, it's a give or take type of weapon, but let's go ahead and pick it up because I'm gonna wrap this video here pretty soon. I want to show off another weapon before we do wrap it up, though. So we'll pick this one up, and Blunderbuss, I guess I'll just leave you behind. And it's a really decent weapon. The only problem... Oh, this one does, um... Okay, yeah. There's a certain weapon, I forgot which one it is. I think it's the Fire Bus, which, um... You have to use it until it overheats, and until it overheats, it'll kind of cool down. So you have to use it to its max potential before it decides to cool down on you. A really interesting weapon, indeed. So over here at level number three, we have to now vanquish three Zom beast 
So, I think we're just about done with this video, guys, because I'm only kind of limited to what I could show you here in the Falcon one-shots, because, uh, time constraints. Slow Effect Plus for the Blunderbuss. We'll pick this up. This will be an icon we can level up later. Let me go ahead and show you the zombies at the very least, if I can. I'm gonna go back to the hub and show you the leveling of the items. Actually, I could do that, but now that I think about it, I don't have enough money to level up another weapon or a trinket back home, so... That would be a waste of my time, actually. But, let's see here. Oh, there it is. So that right there is the zombies. He's relatively easy to bring down. Um, he just hits like a ton of bricks, though. So, um, you can really easily kind of kite his attacks. And he won't even get close to you. But if he get, does get close and he hits you, expect a lot of damage. And as I mentioned, do not leave a room that you've aggroed enemies because they will follow you. They will definitely follow you non-stop. Oh, we even got the blast radius on the zombies. So yeah, really easy to kite, but as I mentioned, if he hits you, it's gonna hurt a lot. Very much so. Flamethrower on your little fellas here. Oh, you stuck over here? Yeah, he's stuck. <laughs> you silly zombies. And when you beat the other two, the next level will be opened up to the boss itself. Um, which I'm not even sure where the other two are at. And I think we're almost out of time here. So let me go back to the main menu here. Um, so there you go. Over here we have the blunderbuss. We already had that one. I guess we picked up the pickup range. Revolver plus one. That one we already had. Grenade launcher. Health item plus. Flamethrower. There you go. But that's essentially how this works down. This is Monsters and Monocles. It hits Steam on the 16 and it's early access. Uh, I'm looking forward to the game. It's actually quite fun indeed, and I can definitely see how it could benefit from multiplayer play as well. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a thumbs up. All the information for the game will be down below in the description. I will catch you next time.